Hi, Yoram here with part two of the video in which I'm sharing my complete setup of OBS and uh, Stream Deck. Uh, I showed you in the first part, uh, which hopefully uh, on the top right corner, you're going to see a link to it. Uh, I showed you how I set up OBS for the setup that you see here. However, uh, it really works well when you have Stream Deck and I can tell you that uh, I, I would not be able to manage it without Stream Deck, the way I program Stream Deck, uh, as easily through a webinar or through a, a workshop or, or even just a meeting uh, if I didn't have the setup that I have with Stream Deck. So in this video, in this part two, I'm going to show you my Stream Deck setup step by step. Again, I'm counting on you seeing some of my previous videos on how to set up Stream Deck and some of the special functions like switch keys and multi-function keys. Uh, but once you watch them, now what I'll do is just share my complete setup. Stay with me. The first thing you'll notice is that uh, on Stream Deck, I have uh, the uh, G7 here. That is the profile that I'm using. I have several different profiles, but what I realized is with the ability to use folders, I'm actually having folders for different functions. And as you can see, I'm using Stream Deck for three different programs. Uh, one of them is OBS, specifically OBS when it's running on top of something. So as broadcasting. Uh, DCS Digital Combat Simulator, you should really try this. And Microsoft Flight Simulator, if I feel like flying planes that carry absolutely no weapons whatsoever and cannot shoot at anything. But what I'm going to do here is show you my OBS setup because I'm sure that this is what you care about. So uh, I'm going to actually use the screen here to go between uh, different parts. So one thing is this OBS button, you can see that it is a folder. So I define it uh, through creating a folder. It's a folder. The logo that I brought here, uh, and you only have one logo because it's opening a folder. There is no uh, uh, on and off for it. And the uh, folder that you see here is um, taking me takes me to the next level, which is OBS. So I'm going to double click on it and it takes me in there. The uh, logo is just or, or the uh, image that I created for that uh, for that button is just taking the OBS logo because that's the most uh, simple thing that that I could use. So first of all, you can move this button around, but I think the top left side kind of makes sense. So I just left it there. This is a default button that allows me to go back up one level up. So we're going to go back down. And what I did, this, this is kind of my main panel. So you can see that as many functions that I'm using in Stream Deck and in OBS, I have seven buttons that I'm not using. Actually, you can include this one that has almost no value other than change layer. So eight buttons. And I'm only using six, seven, I'm sorry, here. So I have one button for scenes to change scenes. I will typically click on this and be inside of the scenes level or the scenes folder. Change the screen that I have that, that I'm using uh, if I'm integrating a screen. What you're seeing right now here on OBS, in the OBS screen, is I'm using a scene that does not include any other. But if I changed it to, uh, let's say, this scene here, then I'm actually sharing a screen. So I wanted to have the ability to change. I'm going to go back to this one. And I wanted to be able to change uh, what screen I'm using. I have three screens. Number one is the monitor uh, in integrated screen. Number three is a Dell screen that's right above it. And number two is actually the big screen that I have in front of me and for and to the left, again, an external screen. So I got two screens connected to my laptop and I can choose which one of them when I involve integrated screen is going to be there. The next one and each one of, well, almost each one of those, each one of these four our folders. So each one of them is going to take me one layer down. This is my scene one. This is what I get there. This is my screen selection one. This is my logo one that allows me to choose which logo. So for example, for these videos, I, hey, you know what? I actually forgot. I should have activated the DIY and I just pressed on it and activated the DIY uh, the do-it-yourself speaker logo. So I have different logos that I can select from. Uh, again, level up, 
background. What background do I want to have? Again, it's a folder. Uh, I have multiple backgrounds or no background at all. So uh, multiple uh, backgrounds and I can choose between them. Uh, these are the four folders that I have here. So each one of these has a layer down. These are multi-function keys. So each one of them will have several functions and I'll show you what. And, and this one actually is just uh, simply uh, the record button. So this is all it does, it, it records. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to show you what it looks like. And uh, yes, hopefully double clicking on this from this is not actually going to record. So what I did here is I just really pulled the OBS Studio record button or record function to this button and uh, don't have to say anything here. But one thing is, again, notice that there are, what would it look like when it's active? What does it look like when it's not active? So what I did was when it's not active, it has this red circle, which typically you will see on tape recorders. And I even added the word start as part of this. I didn't put it here in the title. I put it as part of the image itself. And when I, I am recording, I made it all look red and put a stop black square here to indicate that this is how I stop it. So again, I showed you in another video how to program what these buttons look like. I didn't just take something that was available and that's how I did it. Next, uh, I'm going to take you to the live one. So the live button is what makes this live appear. Well, in this scene, it's in the top left corner. But for example, if I went to another scene, if I went to this scene, you will notice that, uh, let's see, where does that take us? The live is here. And with that button, I can turn it on and off wherever it is in different scenes. And that's that's an important statement, and I'll, I'll show you why. Same with the, the uh, com. So what the live and com buttons are, they really are multi-action switches. So again, I have, uh, if it's active, then you will see the live on. If it's inactive, you will see that the live is off. And uh, now the live is off and the button is actually grayed out. What's defined in here? Let me get into the, defin the definition of it. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do is get into the uh, functionality of it. And here is what I did. I went into the different scenes. I'm going to take one of them. This is the main scene. The source is live. So if I went to the main scene here, which will take me there, you can see that the source is live. There is a live source in here. I turn it on and off. Uh, that's what I do. And what I do is I activate it. So function one of this button to turn it on is in this scene, in this scene, this is scene number two on the left, scene number three on the right, scene number four, the dual one, scene number five, uh, scene number seven, I'm sorry, so I didn't even do that for scenes five and six, uh, and scene number eight is uh, my newsroom scene uh, that looks like this, like newsroom. So once again, even for this one, live is going to bring the live and you will see in a different place and you will see that this is what it indicates here. Let's go back here. So number two is the same list and all I did was deactivate instead of in number one, it was activate. So I could activate a source or deactivate a source depending on which status of this button I am. But when I did that, I did that for all six scenes simultaneously. So imagine wanting to do that without Stream Deck. What I would have to do is whenever I change a scene, I would have to go and start selecting different sources to turn them on and off. And I wanted to just decide generally if live is on or my logo is on because I did exactly the same thing with my logo. So this time the logo is only used in three sources. So in one case, it's going to activate it in uh, activate scene one, the yoramsolomon.com. In the second one, it is deactivating it. And when it's activated, it's green. When it's deactivated, it's black. 
Okay, these are these two buttons. I talked about this one. This is just the source. Now I'm going to show you uh, one of these as an example. Uh, I'll take this one. This one is relatively simple. I have uh, three sources. Actually, it's a little different than the others too. So I, I will uh, share some of the others as well. So what we have here is a selection of the different screens. Each one of these buttons is actually, once again, a multi-action button. And I... Uh, there is no off to it. This is just a selection. And so uh, I'm either selecting it or, or I'm not selecting it. I'm selecting something else. So I just had these three. If I go into one of them, what you will see is that what I do is I activate the integrated screen. That's my screen number one. That's the screen that's integrated with the laptop and deactivate the other one. Deactivate the deactivate the other two if i went up to this one what i'm doing is activating this monitor activate the left monitor that's the big monitor and you can see that this is what's in the button the the left monitor and again i created those graphics and you saw that in another video and deactivating the integrated screen and deactivating the top the screen number three or the top one right above my laptop screen Okay, that's what I did here. Let's go into the logos. Uh, logos, pretty similar. What I did with each one of them, obviously, to make it easy for me to look at, screen deck, at Stream Deck and know exactly which logo I'm going to bring up. Uh, what I did was uh, just to uh, select the... Uh, let's see, uh, if I select this, uh, I'll first show you if I select it. It's the Book of Trust. Once again, I did not have an off for it. Don't need an off for it. I know which logo I have on the screen because I can see it on the screen. But once I go a level deeper, I activate this logo. This is the name of the source in this scene and I deactivate every other one. So you see that I did something a little different here because what I did was I activated them in the logo scene. If you watch the first part, you will know that I actually created a scene where all the logos are, and what I do with these buttons here is select which one is selected within the logo scene. Uh, once again, I'm going to take you to the logo scene in OBS just so that you will see I have the six logos here and i just choose which one of these six i will select or deselect so if i pressed this button you will see that it created it caused the diy logo to disappear and it activated the smu logo i'm going to press this button now the diy speaker and as i press it note that this turned on and this turned off everything is happening here in the logo scene as and by the way i even have a button that all it does is if i go in here it just deactivates all the six logos so this is what i will use if i decided that i did not want a logo okay with that i'm going to go back to uh, put myself as main and uh, this is what i did with logos uh, I'll go a level up. Uh, background. Background is actually pretty similar. Same thing. Uh, I did create a background. I think I called it background camera. We will see it. Yes, camera background. That's a scene. And once again, with these buttons, I decide which one is activated and which ones are deactivated. So uh, this is how I select those. Let's see uh, what did I do with scenes. Scenes is actually uh, slightly different. Uh, what I did here is choose between the different scenes. So I, I just brought the scene button. But again, those are... Uh, no, actually, uh, th this is pretty simple. Uh, just I brought in the scene button in here. There's on and off. And I'm just choosing between those scenes. Uh, my guess, well, no, I could not have done the same with logos or backgrounds because here I'm selecting between scenes. So simply choosing this one would eliminate the other one because there's only one scene in OBS. But choosing sources, you can put multiple sources. So when I have multiple sources that I want to choose between, what I decided to do is to create a scene that has this type of source, whether it's logo or background or uh, link or, or whatever else, and create 
buttons that choose between the scenes, but those are multi-function buttons. And what they do is you choose the source you want and you deactivate. So you activate the one you want and you deactivate the others. Whereas choosing a scene is a lot simpler because uh, once you choose one scene, by definition, the way OBS works and Stream Deck and OBS work, you eliminate everything else. Notice that I brought the record button here as well because I figured that I will spend most of the time with Stream Deck being either here in this level or in the higher level. So I have the record button in the same place to make it uh, easy for me to remember. And uh, that's pretty much how I said it. Uh, there are kind of two ways to, to play with those scenes, uh, with those sources. I mean, one way would be for me, for example, with live to just go everywhere in every scene that live exists and just activate it here and then activate it in another place, activate it in another place which is what I did here with background and logo, I did something a little different, and that is to uh, create its own scene and in that scene select between them and bring that scene into other scenes at the higher level. That's how I set it up. I know I went through a lot of stuff. If you watch some of the previous videos, it will help you understand how the different parts work. So I'm assuming that you have watched part of it. And the purpose of this video is for me to share with you what I'm doing. I'm, I'm very happy. It took me a while to get to the setup that I have between OBS and Stream Deck now. And I just wanted to share it with you. Do your own thing, do what works for you, but at least you know how I'm doing mine and, and I'm not, are not curious uh, about it. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next video. I recorded this video for you based on what currently exists and what I know right now. But things change, new technology, new products, new software versions, new ideas that I get, some of them from viewers like you. If you want to be informed when I release new videos with new or updated content, subscribe to this channel and get notified when I release them. Oh, and you can also like this video. Also, check out my resources for speakers like you who want to do things yourself at thediyspeaker.com.